The second phase of the analysis is the string analysis. <coughs> and in string analysis, given a sanitizer function that we extracted, we compute, we use symbolic forward and backward fixed point computation to compute three things. We compute the post image of the function or the post condition. We compute the pre image of the function or the precondition. And we compute the negative pre image of the function or the precondition for reject. Okay, let's see what we mean by this. We're going to illustrate this on this simple example. So, this example uses only the alphabet A and B. We wanted to simplify the example, so we are just sticking to this alphabet. Since this is a function, it has a domain and a codomain. The domain of the function is sigma star. Okay, and sigma star means all strings that you can generate from sigma. Like for example, A, B, AB, and so on and so forth. Okay, it's an infinite set. But each string in this set is a finite string. This is very important. The set itself is infinite, but each string has a, is finite, has a finite length. So the domain of the function is sigma star. Okay, and the dots here means that it's infinite. The codomain of the function is sigma star union bottom. And what we, what we mean by bottom here is that it's a way of modeling rejecting invalid inputs. <clears throat> so when a function rejects, we say that it maps its input to bottom. So let's see how the function works. So first the function validates the input using this uh, filtering operation. If the input is not one of these three, string, three strings, A, A, B, B, A, B, it's going to reject this. And we say that it's going to map it to bottom. If the input is one of these three strings, then we do a replace operation. If the input matches AB, then we are going to replace it with BA. So we are going to map AB to BA. And then for the other two, we are going to return them as they are. So we are going to map them to, to themselves. So AA is going to be mapped to AA, and BB is going to be mapped to BB. <coughs> okay, given this function, now, what do we mean by uh, post image, pre image, and negative pre image? Given any input, okay, if we execute this function with any input, what would be the possible outputs? So this is the post image of the function. These are the possible output of the function. These are the possible strings that the function may return. And we use string analysis to over approximate this set, and we use an automata to represent the result. Given a preferred output or non preferred output, the pre image of the function is the set of inputs, set of input values that resulted in this output. So you give me the preferred output that you want the function to output or the non-preferred output that you don't want the function to output. I give you what is the input that resulted in this output. Finally, <coughs> and we over approximate this, uh, this set and represent the result using an uh, automata. Finally, the negative pre-image is the set of input strings that are rejected by uh, by the function. And if you notice here, the previous sets were finite, the pre-image and the post-image. The negative pre-image here is an infinite set. It's just a coincidence for this example. But the important thing is, we still can, also, we still can represent infinite sets using the automata. Okay? So the automata is a finite structure that can represent uh, certain types of uh, infinite uh, and finite uh, sets, which we call regular sets or regular languages. <coughs> so, let's see how an automata uh, works. So, this automata basically represents the post image of the function given the input, uh, the, the possible output of the function given any input. This is what we mean here. We say the post of the function f with sigma star given any input. Okay, so this is the uh, the set that that is represented by this automata. Okay, so how does this how do how the automata works? 
Let's assume that the input table for the automata has the uh, string AA. So the automata starts from the beginning, uh, from the start state. It reads the first input. Then it takes the transition on this input and goes to state 2. Then it moves the reading header. It reads the second character of the input. It moves the transition, uh, uh, moves based on the transition to the state to state 4. And finally, we ended up with an accepting state, the double circle, and we end, we end, uh, we finished reading the input. In this case, we say that the, the automata accepts the string AA, or we can say that the string AA is an element in the set of strings that are represented by this automata, or it's an element in the language of this automata. Let's get, so this automata represents a finite set, okay? Let's look at an automata that represents an infinite set, okay? So the automata itself is a finite state automata, but it can actually represent an infinite set. In this case, it's the negative pre-image here, okay? So, we call this the pre-bottom of f. This is the pre-image, the negative pre-image of the function, and as you see, it's an infinite set. And the automata to represent this is this automata. So how does the automata represent uh, uh, infinite? Using this loop here. Okay, so let's take, for example, a kind of long string like this one, B, A, B, A. Let's see how the automata accepts this string. So starting from zero, we're going to read B and then move to state three. And then we are going to move to A, read A, and then move to state 1. And then we're going to move the reading header, read B, and then stay in state 1. And then move the reading header, read A, and still stay in state 1. And then we are going to move to the end. Now we finished reading the input, and we are still in an accepting state. So the automata actually, this string, this input string, is an element in the set represented by this automata. So, in our analysis, uh, to make the analysis efficient, we actually represent the automata uh, symbolically, the transition relation of the automata symbolically, using a multi-terminal binary decision diagram, or MBDD. So, <clears throat> let me show you here. Here's the explicit automata, okay? For example, state 2 here, we have 128 transitions. To represent these transitions, we need at least 128 bytes. But if you look here, we only have one uh, transition from 2 to 2. So how does this uh, generally work? So we are, we are looking at uh, the ASCII, not the extended ASCII. So the ASCII contains 128 bits, which means that each character in ASCII uh, is represented using 7 bits. So, <clears throat> given a character, and we are in state 0, we start with the first bit of the character. If the first bit is 0, we move to here. If the first bit is 1, we move to here. And so on. We, we take the second bit, and then if it is 0, then we suddenly jump to 2. What does this mean? This means that all characters that have the first bit as 0, and the second bit as, as 0, they all take you from state 0 to state 2. Okay? So hopefully the uh, um, this is uh, you got an, an an idea of what a symbolic automata is, but anyway you don't need to um, deeply understand uh, this for the rest of the presentation. If you want more on this, then you can um, go on and read or watch any video on BDDs, binary decision diagrams. The only difference is that this is a multi-terminal binary decision diagram. It's a little bit uh, different, but it almost shares most of the things with the BDD. <coughs> so, in our analysis, the code that we uh, implemented, everything is represented like this, not actually like this. So, let's take a look at an uh, analysis example. So, we are given this function, okay? So, this is different than the function that we started with. Now, it's a little bit more complex function. Now, when we say that we compute the post image of the function, how do we do this? Okay, so we use data flow uh, analysis here. 
And uh, let's first start by um, uh, giving some input to this function and then seeing what's the output. So let me go here. This is the same function. So now I'm going to pass some input to the function. Okay. So if I pass this, uh, let's start with this one. So I'm going to pass a to the function. If I pass the input a, the function is going to return a. So the input does not contain less than, and the input is less than four characters, so it will be returned. If I pass, for example, a, b, c, d, then what will happen is that this input is actually going to be rejected. It will cause an error. Why? The input does not contain less than, so not here. it's not because of this. The input actually is more than uh, three characters long. So it contains four characters. So it's going to be rejected. Okay. On the other hand, if <coughs> if we change the uh, last character, uh, let's say that this character we're going to make it uh, less than. Let's see what happens. No error. Although the input is four characters long, we still don't get no error. Why? Because the delete here, this replace operation, deleted the less than. So we still get three characters here, and the output length is three characters. So notice the difference between the input and the output. Throughout the talk, we are going to talk sometimes about the input and sometimes about the output. So be careful to differentiate the two. Actually, if we put as much less than as we want, we still are going to return ABC, because these less than are deleted. So now, back to this. So what we have seen now is some examples of input and output. The question is, how do you compute, given any input, all possible outputs of this function? How does this work? So uh, <coughs> we use uh, our string analysis library to compute this. And we use what's called data flow analysis. This is, um, you can uh, refer to compiler books to get an overview of um, or understanding of what data flow analysis uh, is. For example, the Dragon book. Um, so let me give you a quick, uh, a quick uh, demo of this one. So we say here, given any input. So here's the actual code. Uh, see the actual code here. OK. So we say here, this means construct an automata that accepts any input. And if you want to take a look at the automata itself, this is the automata. So the automata accepts any, uh, uh, any input. You can just go on and on here uh, for uh, uh, just accepting any input of any length. OK? So when we say that we assume any input, we use an automata like this. Let's go back to the example. Now, we get, we get here, the input is sigma star, OK? So now we are abstractly executing the function. So we execute for all possible values, not just for single input, OK? So it's, this is called abstract interpretation. So we are executing for all possible uh, values. So now, if given all the possible values before this replace operations, what are all the possible values after this replace operation at program point one? So given a set of values for x, what are the possible values that this x is going to take after the string replace? So in our case, we started with the input being any string. What are the set of values that this x can take? Of course, they are all values that do not contain less than. So let's see how do how do we compute this using the libstranger library, by the way? This is our library. So we do this first. We construct the string less than. OK, so this is the character that we want to uh, delete. And then we call the function d if a replace extra bit. And what this function do, basically, is that given the automata m1, this is the subject automata that we are going to work on, and the search automata m2, this is the automata that we will use to search. So we will search for things in this automata, accepted by this automata, in this automata. 
and we are going to replace them by this string and we are going to re return the result as automata which means that we will try all possible results of the replace okay so this is how it's done now what is the result this is the result basically it looks very similar to this one but notice that there is a comma here so this is a character range from null to semicolon and then there is another character range from equals to 253 okay so there is one character here missing which is the character after the semicolon of course this character should be less than let's take a look quickly at the ascii table and we can see here that the character after semicolon is less than and the one after it is equals so so now we computed all possible values that will reach here by taking the post image of this replace operations okay we call it we call it we compute the post image of the operation itself now this is not the post image of the whole function the whole sanitizer function this is the post image of a sanitization operation inside the function okay so all the possible values that may reach this program point program point one are represented by that by that automata notice that all these sets are infinite sets but since we are using automata we actually can represent them with a finite structure now given all the possible values that may reach here which are the strings that do not have less than what are the possible values that may reach the program point p2 of course they have these strings they have to be strings that do not contain less than and they are three characters or less okay so let's see how we do this <clears throat> here so here first of all we construct an automata that represents the condition uh, the filtering operation here so this filtering operation is a linked operation it acts, it's it represents all strings of length 0 to 3 this is what we do here sigma c1 to c2 okay so sigma from 0 to 3 all strings that are of length 0 1 2 or 3 we could call this the condition automata okay given this automata let's jump here we intersect it with p1 with the value that we got after the replace operation the result would give us the strings that satisfy the condition okay but the strings that are actually uh, after applying the replace operation on these uh, strings so this is the result this is the condition okay you see it's three zero characters one character three two characters or three characters any string of this these lengths can be accepted by this automata now this is p2 so it's any string of length 0 1 3 uh, 2 3 but it does not contain less than okay so these are all the possible strings that may reach this program point p2 same thing for program point p3 the strings that may reach program point p3 are the strings that do not satisfy this condition or in other words they satisfy the negation of the condition and since we use an automata we can actually get the negation of the automata which is the complement of the automata this is not possible for other um, theoretical models like context-free grammars for example but for an automata we can actually get the negation of the automata this is what we do we negate the condition using the dfa negate and we got the negation of the condition what is the negation of the condition it is any string of length one two three four or more it has to be four or more characters this is very obvious from the branch condition here any string of length four or more okay so now given this negation we are going to intersect it with the result <coughs> sorry with the result from the replace operation with the with the result from p1 here so given all the strings after deleting the list then the strings that will reach the else are the strings that are of 
four characters or more but do not contain less than this is actually what we get here sorry here okay so they are all strings that do not contain less than and they have to be four or more characters and here we reached the we finished the second phase or the string uh, uh, analysis this string analysis is implemented in libstranger which is available in uh, github so you can go under UCSB verification lab github uh, uh, account and then you will find the uh, stranger the libstranger which is a C library we also have a C++ library which makes things much easier to implement so instead of doing these uh, low-level calls to the C library you can actually use the C++ library and this code basically using the C++ is equivalent to uh, to this code so this is the C code and the commented code is the C++ code and they do exactly the same thing but you can see here that it's much easier and this is very important if you wanna construct an automata for regular expression then you have to use the C++ and the same code is available also for Java using a class called stranger automaton so it's there's a C++ class and the Java class but both of them they use actually the stranger the lib uh, stranger this code is available in uh, a tool called simrip which is also available uh, in git uh, uh, on git hub so now we finished the uh, second phase and I'll stop here and uh, uh, move to the uh, uh, next phase in the next uh, video.